So as controversial as dissociative disorders are, we're going to move on to another category, which in my career has been pretty controversial, but it's becoming less controversial over time. And that is the personality disorders. So a personality disorder is the idea that you have an extreme inflexible personality and your personality becomes highly maladaptive. This is super controversial and some of the criticisms are a lot of the personality disorders in the DSM-5 seem like milder versions of other disorders, which then is it really just a mild version of the other disorder? Is it its own disorder? Is this just another clinical cutoff? To explain that, I'm going to show you this little chart of the prevalences. We can see that in the first three that are listed, we have paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality. And this is the idea that schizotypal actually shares some of the symptoms with schizophrenia. And paranoid could also share some of the symptoms with a lot of anxiety disorders or schizophrenia. So they almost look like more milder versions that you don't have to have full-fledged schizophrenia or full-fledged anxiety disorder. At this end, we have obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Well, how is that different from obsessive compulsive disorder? Well, it's the idea that somebody just likes things that are neat and tidy, but they're not completely run by their obsessions and compulsions. They're just more of a bit of a neat freak. Well, is that pathological or is that just personality? When does it become a disorder and shouldn't that just be OCD? Then we have dependent and avoidant. And these are also similar to some of our anxiety measures. So you can see the first three and the last three on this could be just considered milder versions of other disorders we talked about. So instead of talking about those six, we're going to talk about the four in the middle. We're going to talk about antisocial, borderline, histrionic, and narcissistic. And these four don't seem to be milder versions. And they tend to be the ones that are getting the most emphasis and are the least controversial at this point in time. So in terms of all the personality disorders, antisocial personality disorder is the one that has the strongest biological basis and really seems to have an organic DNA cause. And that's because we can see this tract in families and we can see this in terms of our brain activity. What antisocial personality disorder is, is it is a person who is chronically violent and they're unaccepting of social norms. They may not always be violent, but what tends to be is they tend to be very explosive and abusive, even if they're just psychologically abusive and not physically abusive. They tend to be a person who lacks empathy and lacks remorse when they hurt other people. And because of this, an individual with antisocial personality disorder may be more likely to commit crimes and illegal activity, though not always. Sometimes these describe our serial killers and our massive villains. Sometimes they just describe our business CEOs and our politicians, which could be villains depending on which way you spin it. What we know is the amygdala in the brain tends to be much smaller in people with antisocial personality disorder. It tends to not light up or be as active either. And that's our fear center. People with antisocial personality disorder tend to not fear, tend to not have empathy, and tend to not have remorse for the violent or horrific acts that they do. So because of this, antisocial personality disorder is called psychopathy. This is a person high in psychoticism who doesn't have that remorse. And so we often conflate the two terms psychopath and sociopath. Sociopath tends to be more of a learned condition where somebody starts off, maybe they were maltreated, maybe they were exposed to a lot of trauma and they became that way. Versus a psychopath seems to be born that way. And antisocial personality disorder is something we diagnose in adulthood, but commonly we will see a trajectory where a child has oppositional defiance disorder, and then as an adolescent they'll have conduct disorder, and then as an adult they'll have antisocial personality disorder. The trajectory doesn't have to go that way. Not all kids with ODD or CD are a psychopath. And that depends on how much empathy they have and how, bad, how much they feel about it and what are the causes behind their oppositional defiance disorder and conduct disorder. And so in a lot of cases, they do have empathy and remorse and they're not going to become psychopaths. And so there's a lot of nuance associated with these ones. Now, we did the personality unit before. We talked about the dark triad and we talked about psychoticism and how that was different from narcissism. And so narcissistic personality disorder is considered a separate diagnosis. And rather than not feeling a remorse or empathy, this is just a huge preoccupation with oneself and major delusions of grandiosity. So grandiose delusions where you really think you are the best, you are the best there ever was, and you're very intolerant to criticism. Now, of course, this could describe someone who's just high in narcissism personality trait, but it becomes a disorder when this becomes really distressful, maybe not to them, but maybe to the people around them, and it becomes very maladaptive. This is the idea that you're not really getting ahead in work or school because you're so intolerant to criticism and it's burning out and straining all of your relationships. 
and it's causing major harm to other people around you. So that's narcissistic personality disorder. Then we have one that often gets confused with narcissistic personality disorder. This is histrionic personality disorder. This doesn't mean you feel better than other people, but it's the idea you want to be in the spotlight. You might not feel like you're the best, but you want all the attention. And so people with histrionic personality disorder tend to be overly dramatic. They tend to come home from work and they have all these stories. Oh, this person said this and this person said this and you would not believe this. And everything is drama. Everything is a big ordeal. They tend to have exaggerated emotions and in a sense of an exaggerated reality where everything is good or everything is terrible and they're just always strongly agree or strongly disagree on everything. And so nothing is a molehill. Everything is a mountain with histrionic personality disorder. Big thing though, is they want to be the center of attention. At parties, they will talk the loudest, laugh the loudest, do the most extreme things to become the center of attention. And to get that center of attention and to get that approval, sometimes that means being sexually seductive. They, because this is often associated with a low self-esteem, sometimes people will do things against what they want to do, or they're even not aware of what they actually want. They will cave to the pressures of others. So we'll see people take their clothes off at parties, for instance, or they'll see people experiment with drugs or do really dangerous things just to win the approval of others, just to be extreme. We can think about this today in terms of like the social media star who just throws caution to the wind and will do really shock value with the stuff just for the views and just for the likes. It could be a bit of narcissistic, but it could be a part of histrionic personality disorder as well, where they just want that approval. And the final one we're going to talk about is borderline personality disorder. This one's becoming much more common. It was a lot more controversial, but we are getting a lot more understanding of this. At the service, it can look a lot like bipolar because it tends to fluctuate between feeling good and not feeling good or feeling too good that you might be impulsive. But it's different. It tends to go a lot faster. And rather than being a fluctuation between depression and mania, borderline personality disorder tends to be this instability. It's this instability of your self-image. You don't know if you like yourself or hate yourself and it fluctuates and it can fluctuate within an hour. It can fluctuate many times within a day. It doesn't last as long as with bipolar. It can also make major fluctuations in your mood, which is why it can look like bipolar, but it can also fluctuate in your relationships. It's the idea that you can throw yourself at someone and be in love and then all of a sudden want to break up with them, or you can feel really committed, but then you go and cheat on them. And it's the idea that you can feel very hot and very cold at the same time. If you were to drink a hot coffee with ice cream, for instance, it's the idea that you feel so complex and everything's happening at once that you want to run away, but you want to indulge. And because of this, individuals with borderline personality disorder feel very impulsive. They feel like they're going to just go and do stuff very rationally and very much on impulse. They tend to have very much a intolerance for distress. They feel these very strong emotions and these very strong emotions come on so fast that they feel a lot of distress around it and they, they can't handle the emotions. So they do stuff really impulsively to try and numb these really intense feelings. It tends to be associated with past trauma or a fear of abandonment or low self-esteem. And it tends to be the idea that they just don't feel safe. There is really good treatments for this now, and it is becoming a more common diagnosis, especially in women in university. And so there is hope for it, but it can be a really destabilizing and debilitating diagnosis. It's the idea that all of a sudden you might go and do something uh, very impulsive, like use a lot of illicit drugs or self harm or um, go and get engaged. And then all of a sudden you regret it and you feel differently within minutes. So it can be a really hot and cold, near and far, all at the same time sort of disorder. 